welcome you once again to the channel chemistry with dr sk sundar rai in this channel we will answer the concept based experimental based chemistry questions let's start today we will discuss the viva questions on iodine titrations which will be useful for UG, PG and also B Pharma and 11-12th class. Let's begin. So first question is, what do you mean by iodine titrations? The answer is, the redox titration involving iodine directly or indirectly as an oxidizing agents are called iodine titrations. Next is, types of iodine titration. So iodine titrations is of two types. One is iodimetric and other is iodometric. Although it seems very similar, but they are quite different. So in, it is, uh, uh, it will take time to explain both of this or to distinguish this. For this, I will explain it in a, another video, in a long video. So in that video, I will explain everything. What, what is the difference between iodometric and iodometric? What is the similarity? What is the dissimilarity? Everything I will dis discuss in that video. So uh, I will give the link in the description box you will find out that what do you mean by iodometric the titration in which standard iodine solution is titrated with a reducing agent is known as iodimetric titration that means the direct you will take the iodine solutions and a reducing agent the direct titration is known as iodimetric titrations the next question is what do you mean by iodometric titrations in iodometric titrations you will take potassium iodide and you will add it in a oxidizing agent so when potassium iodide reacts with the oxidizing agent it will oxidize potassium iodide to iodine so iodine will be liberated so this liberated iodine again titrated with standard reducing agent that uh, like example sodium thiosulfate to find out the strength of the oxidizing agent so it is a of two two steps reactions in the first steps potassium iodide is react with the oxidizing agent liberation of iodine and in the second step this liberated iodine uh, titrated with standard sodium thiosulfate solutions the next question is applications of iodimetric titration there are so many applications so one is determination of ascorbic acids in vitamin c tablets which is included in undergraduate course and pg courses of chemistry honors and chemistry pg students uh, determination of thiosulfates, determination of uh, sulfite, determination of arsenite, and determination of stannous chloride. As already we have discussed that in iodometric titrations, you will take some reducing agent and this reducing agent will react with iodine directly. So it is a one-step reaction. Applications of iodometric titrations. In iodometric titration, you can estimate the amount of copper sulfate or potassium dichromate or potassium permanganate estimate the amount of iron, hydrogen peroxides, bromine and also chlorine in bleaching powder. So there are so many applications out of uh, uh, very few are given here and uh, this uh, estimation of copper sulphate already uh, in the course of uh, uh, graduation course of chemistry and students and uh, the estimation of chlorine in bleaching powder also in uh, undergraduate course of uh, uh, chemistry and so here it is a two steps as, as we have already discussed that iodometric titration is of two steps in the first steps this copper sulfate which is a oxidizing agent will react with potassium iodide and it will oxidize to iodine and in the second step the iod liberated iodine will react with the sodium thiosulfate to form sodium iodide he, whether iodine is a soluble or insoluble in water the answer is iodine is insoluble in water or you can better say iodine is sparingly soluble in water means very few amount of iodine will be soluble and most of them or most of the iodine will be insoluble in water iodine is insoluble in water right so how to prepare iodine solutions the answer is iodine solution is prepared by mixing it with excess potassium iodide solution which makes soluble ki3 complex this ki3 complex is a weak complex and readily release back i2 when treated with the reducing agents that is thiosulfates Next is, in iodometric titrations, why is potassium iodide added? The answer is, in order to liberate equivalent amount of iodine by the oxidizing agent, 
which then react with standard hypo solutions. The next question is in idiomatic titrations, when iodine is liberated, how is it detected? The color of the solution turns to brown. What is the color of the iodine solutions? The answer is the color of iodine solution is brownish yellow in concentrated solutions and in dilute solutions it will be light yellow. The next question is what is the color of Ki solutions? The answer is the color of the Ki solution is colorless. The next question is write the formula of sodium thiosulfate and sodium tetrathionate. The answer is sodium thiosulfate is Na2H2O3 and sodium tetrathionate is Na2H4O6. The next question is what are the color of the sodium thiosulfate and sodium tetrathionate? The colors are colorless. What is the oxygen state of sulfur in sodium thiosulfate and in sodium tetrathionate? In sodium thiosulfate, the oxygen state is plus 2 and in sodium tetrathionate, the oxygen state is plus 2.5. What is hyposolutions? The answer is hyposolution is sodium thiosulfate. Why sodium thiosulfate is called hyposolutions? Hyposolution is the abbreviation for sodium thiosulfate or sodium hyposulfite. It is used for both film and photographic paper processing and known as a photographic fixer. It is often referred to as hypo from the original chemical name hyposulfite or soda. What is the indicator used in, in idometric or iodimetric titrations? The answer is freshly prepared starch solution. Why freshly prepared starch solution is used? Because starch will decompose on storing for many days and, it, and its sensitivity is decreased, result will not be accurate. Is starch a redox indicator? No, starch is not a redox indicator. It responds specifically to the presence of I2. It is not a change with a change in redox potential. Like you know, redox indicators that is diphenylamine or methylene blue, they are redox indicator. They will change the color according to change in redox potential. But starch is not like that. What is starch? It is a polycarbon hydrate consisting of numerous glucose units joined by glycosidic bond. So it is of two types. One is linear or helical polymer that is amylose and second one is branch polymer that is amylopectin. Which fraction of starch is active and responsible for both color with iodine solutions? The answer is the amylose and it will form blue color when react with I2. What is the color of starch with iodine solutions? As already you mentioned, the amylose fractions will form blue color when treated with iodine, while the amylopectin form purple red when treated with I2. So, for iodometric or iodimetric titrations, we have to take amylose starch. Although solutions of iodine in aqueous iodide has a dark yellow color, it is not used as self-indicator like potassium permanganate. Why? The answer is at the end point without starch, the color changes from pale yellow to colorless, which is not detectable precisely. But it can be more easily detectable by using the starch solution. The iodine blue color complex is visible even low concentration that is 2 into 10 to the minus 2 molar concentrations. That's why we are using starch as an indicator in this titrations. What happens when starch is added to pale yellow solutions in the conical flux? The color changes to blue. Why the pale yellow color of iodine solutions turns to blue when starch is added? The answer is it can explain in two different ways. In the first way, we can explain that starch reacts with iodine in the presence of iodide to form an intensely blue color complex. Or in secondly, we can explain the iodine molecules can fit or inclusion inside the co coiled or helical polymers that is amylose which turns dark blue. Why starch solution should not be added at the beginning? The answer is because at the beginning of the titration, the concentration of the iodine is very high. And if the starch solution is added, when the concentration of iodine is high, some iodine will be absorbed on the surface of the starch and may remain even at the end point which affect the results. What are the disadvantages of using starch indicator? Although the only advantage is that is it is inexpensive, 
there are some disadvantages. They are starch is insoluble in cold water, starch solutions cannot be kept prepared for long time, it produces permanent blue when the concentration of iodine is high, that is why it should be added just prior to the end point. When the solution is diluted, the end point is difficult to determine. The next question is, in iodine titration, what happens to iodine after the end point? The iodine gets reduced to iodide. That means the oxidation state changes from 0 to minus 1. At the end point of the titration, give the oxygen state of iodine in the solutions. The answer is, oxygen state of iodine is minus 1. We have already discussed that when iodine is treated with sodium thiosulfate, the iodine will reduce from iodine to iodide. The oxidation state changes from 0 to minus 1. The next is, what is the color changes in the end point of the titrations? The answer is, the blue color changes to colorless. As we have already discussed that iodine treated with starch, they will form a complex which is blue in color. But sodium iodide treated with starch, there will be no color that is colorless. How can you test presence of or absence of iodine by using star solutions? The answer is when iodine is present, the color of the star solution will be blue. And when iodine is absent, the color of the star solution will be colorless as already discussed in the last slide. I think you will learn something from this. If you think it is helpful for you, then please like this video and subscribe this channel so that you will get the notification of the future video. Thank you.